All right. Well, thank you all for uh, for coming. Um, I'll uh, make this short and sweet. Uh, I've decided that this is going to be uh, my last tournament. Question. Why, Why now? <laughs> right, over here. Why now? Uh, I just feel like it's time. I, I don't know that I'm uh, healthy enough or committed enough to, to go another year. Um, I've always wanted to, uh, in a perfect world, finish at this, uh, at this event. Um, I have a lot of family and friends here, and uh, I, I, I've thought all year that uh, I would know when I when I got to this tournament. And uh, when I was playing my first round, I, I knew. Yeah, it's 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 been a process. It's certainly not it's certainly not days. You know, I, I don't know that I would have had you all come in here and waste your time if it had been days. Um, you know, I, uh, certain parts throughout the year, um, you know, I, I've, I've thought about it and, um, you know, just, just with the way my body feels and with the way that I'm able to I feel like I'm able to compete now, I don't know that that's, it's, it's good enough. And, um, you know, uh, I, I don't know that I, I've ever been someone who's interested in, in, in existing on tour. Um, you know, I have a, a, a lot of a lot of interests and a lot of other things that that uh, excite me, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to those. Peter, is there any way to quantify how much the health issue versus the mental and emotional issue? It, it's tough to say. You know, it's it's kind of chicken or egg. You know, it's how much of mental fatigue is because you don't feel like you can do what you want to do physically. Um, you know, I, you don't know where it starts. Um, but uh, it's tough to, to put a number. Matt. I understand you've been joking about this for a couple of years, but you know, we can talk about 30 and 30 is not that old. Tennis, and obviously, Fed has been playing 30. And we have a good athlete who is very competitive. And in a sense, you were sort of retiring early, no? Now you're saying that? Yeah, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's good. I didn't want to make it through this press conference without a direct comparison to Roger, so thank you for that. Um, <laughs> I, um, I don't know that it's early. You know, I, a number is a number, but I think wear and tear in miles is, is uh, something that's not really an age thing. Um, you know, if you look at the contempor my contemporaries that started with me, Roger's the, the only one that's still, still going and still going strong. Um, you know, it's it's a matter of, of, of how I feel and um, if I feel like I'm able to compete at the, the highest level. And, you know, frankly, these guys have gotten really, really, really good. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sure that um, with compromised health that, that that I can do what I want to do right now. Anything else? Uh, I'm about to the high point is 2003 here. So it's a good place to go out. I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I don't view it in, in, in a scope of, you know, where you had your best win. I, I, I've had a lot of different different memories, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll certainly look back, and I don't know. I feel like I'd be cheating the other memories if I said one was, a, one was the highlight. Um, you know, I, I feel like I've been, uh, been very lucky, and, uh, you know, that's certainly not lost on me. Like, you mentioned other projects, but... What projects would you like to do now that the tennis career is coming to an order? What are some of the priorities for you? Um, well, immediately. Um, More than a year or so. Yeah, I mean, we, we announced uh, yesterday, the day before, we're, we're building uh, with my foundation a youth tennis and learning center in Austin. So I'd like to be hands on with that and not kind of see, see it periodically. Um, you know, I'd like to be on the kind of on site and every day. And there's some other, you know, projects that kind of side projects that I've been doing. and. Um, those excite me a lot right now, um, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. To the right. Andy, how emotional is this for you? Uh, I know you like to make light of things and whatnot, but now that it's final for you, how emotional is it? And what was it about that first round match that kind of clicked? I don't know. It, it, on some, some big moments this year, I've, I, I think I've known. Um, you know, walking off at Wimbledon, I, I, I felt like I knew. Um, Playing here, I, I I don't know what it was. I, I, I couldn't imagine myself being there in in, in another year. Um, you know, I've, I've always, for whatever 
my faults have been. Um, I've always felt like I've, I've, I've never done anything halfway, you know, and, and uh, probably the first time in, in, in my career that I, that I consider and say I'm not sure that I can put everything into it physically and emotionally, and, and, and I don't know that I wanted to disrespect the game by, by coasting home. Um, that's not something, uh, you know, I, I, had, I had plans to play a smaller schedule next year. Um, but the more I thought about it, I, I think you got you got to either be all in or, or not. You know, that's 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 more kind of the way I've 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 chosen to do things. Is there an emotional element to this, fellow? I mean, as maybe you sat alone and thought about it, and talked to your family. Yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I've had some some hard conversations with, uh, with Brooke this year with, uh, with Doug and Larry and. Um, you know, it, it was kind of broken out a little secret over the last couple of days. And then uh, I talked to Larry and Doug um, today. And, uh, and we had talked about it throughout the year, obviously, and um, talked to a bunch, of, a bunch of my friends that are here. And um, it, it, it's, 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 it's fun. Sandy, Sandy. Sandy, what do you think you'll miss the most? All of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, I still I'm lucky enough. There are a lot of a lot of players where I live. I, I I'm I I don't think I'm one of the guys who won't pick up a racket for three years. You know, I I still love the innocent parts of the game. You know, I I, I love hitting tennis balls and. Um, you know, I love seeing the young the young guys do well, and um, you know, so I, you know, I, I'll, I'll still still have a lot of friends to, to watch, and um, I'll, I'll miss I'll miss the relationships probably the most. Um, as time passes, I'll probably miss miss the tennis more, um, but immediately that's that's probably the thing that uh, is is toughest for me. Scott, Andy, why not wait until after your final match, your birthday? Did you want to give the fans an opportunity? Um, those are good reasons. I, I think I wanted an opportunity to, to say goodbye to people as well. Um, you know, I, I don't know how tomorrow is going to go. I hope it goes well, and I hope I'm sticking around. But I just imagine being off the court tomorrow in an empty locker room. Um, you know, I, I think I wanted the chance to say goodbye. And I also, if, uh, if I uh, do run into some emotions tomorrow or in four days or however long, I don't want people to think I'm a little unstable. So, <laughs> or m more, more unstable. Okay. So uh, that's, that's why I came to this decision. And you are, you're, you're playing on the lights of the international tomorrow. And it will potentially could be the last time. What, what do you anticipate about that court? The emotions that you'll feel? I have no idea. I have no idea. And I, I told the... Uh, I, I talked to Larry and Doug, and I said I, I could come out and play great, and it could be the worst thing you've ever seen. I don't know. Um, I haven't done this before, you know, so I, I'm sure it'll be very emotional. Um, I, I, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll still be nervous. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. Um. Maybe I don't know. Um, Ken was certainly a huge, huge part of everything for me, you know, and uh, he he believed in me from from very early on, and uh, you know that that certainly wasn't wasn't easy for me. But uh, you know his uh, his his wife and his daughter are gonna, are going to come up, and and so that'll be uh, it'll be really nice to have them here. George, do you take any example from any athlete you've ever seen who knew the right time to retire? I, no, I, I think the thing that you guys have to understand is there's not going to be a general rule. It's not because you have a certain age next to your name that that's that that's it. You know, there there are a lot of different personalities, and there's a lot of different. Some people just want to play until until they can't play anymore, until they're they're pushed out just by ranking or because they can't get into tournaments. And some people, you know, the, so I I don't think it's fair to maybe generalize this this moment for people and I don't I, you know different people take in different ways so uh, I, I don't know that I looked at anybody else's um, scenario uh, when when thinking about this because I, I don't know that I could pretend to relate to, to whatever they were thinking at a given moment Bill. 
great career, Andy. Um, Thanks. Like, like any top American athlete, you're, you're praised, you're criticized, but what are, what are you most proud of in your run, your career? And if you could point to maybe one or two things that, that you might have changed, what would, what would be that? Um, I don't know. I don't know that I would change much. You know, I, I uh, obviously you. I think everybody would want to win a match or two more. And then, had I won a match or two more, it'd be we'd be looking back at something a little bit different. You know, um, but that's also shaped kind of who I am and 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 how I've been able to learn. You know, if there, if everything would have been easy the whole way, who knows how I'd view things. And uh, I'm pretty content with. Uh, with the, the way I do. So you've learned from playing in this era of uh, Roger and Rafa and Djokovic in terms of your life? Well, I think so. I mean, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I, I know that people view it as, as a career of, you know, the last, last little while of, of some hard knocks, but, you know, I got to, I got to play, you know, and I, I got to play in a crowd and play in Wimbledon finals and, and, and and, and be the guy on a Davis Cup team for a while, and you know, uh, those are opportunities not a lot of people get. You know, so I, as much as uh, I was disappointed and frustrated at times, I'm not sure that I ever felt sorry for myself or begrudged anybody any any of their success. Tom, Andy, the first part of that question: What are you most proud of? Um, you know, I was I was I was pretty good for a long time. Um, you know, uh, one of the reasons, the reasons I gave earlier about not feeling like I could be committed to this thing 100%, that's one of the things I'm proud of, that for 13 or 14 years I was invested fully every, every day. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people throughout that time be invested for a year, kind of t tap out for a year, come back, you know, and, and, and uh, I, I've been pretty good about keeping uh, my nose to the grindstone and, um, you know, I feel like I, I, I won a lot of matches from, from hard work and persistence. You know, even maybe when, uh, w w when they had better options as far as, as, far as shot making. Okay. Over here. Andy, what have been your views to be the face of American tennis for the last eight years? Um, it's been a, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, and, and it's, not, it's not something that, uh, it's not something that's, that's easy every day. You know, for sure. Um, you know, especially when you get kind of anointed at a at a, at a young age, at 17, 18. But it's something you roll with. And um, for the moments where it's been hard, I've gotten for every moment that's been hard, I've had 25 positive things that have come from it. So uh, again, you know, anything that people may view as tough is. It, it, I've been I've been very lucky and very fortunate, and I've gotten a lot of opportunities. And um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade away a day of it. I've uh, I've loved every minute. And TV in the back. Andy, uh, on behalf of Australian tennis and Australia, run any chance to celebrate a birthday in a great career? We can take you out for a few beers tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk after this. I haven't asked her yet. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, you, a lot, of, a lot of stuff with, uh, with, uh, with my foundation. It'll probably be my, my primary focus from, from here for a little bit. Uh, obviously, I've, uh, I, I've gone over to the dark side with you guys with the radio show a little bit. Um, so that, uh, that's fun, and it's something I enjoy doing. And. Um, I'll probably build on that a little bit, um, and there there are some other things also. So I'm I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, a few more questions. Yes. Well, and you're, uh, there's plenty of athletes make this kind of announcement in a flood of tears, and they're not quite sure. But you're saying so so clear about it all, obviously. Uh, I, I feel clear. Um, it's probably the, if I, if I'm being honest, uh, I would have bet against myself on getting through this without tears today, and I must have already. Uh, gotten them all out earlier, but um, I feel pretty good about it. You know, I, I've always, uh, this has been a huge
part of my life always, but I don't know that it's always been my entire life. And, and so I, I do uh, feel very confident in the, the things and the people that, that, I, that I have to fall back on. Scott. Andy, what, what, your first time here at the U.S. Open, what does this place meant to you? My first time. Um, I was here in 98, and I played Fernando Gonzalez in the juniors first round. Uh, I, oh, gosh, yeah. I thought you were talking about a player. I, I came here, in, I think it was 1990, um, with my parents for as a birthday present. And uh, I snuck into the player's lounge <laughs> without, without a credential. <laughs> um, I saw Pete. He was playing video games, and I'm pretty sure I beat him at, like, Mortal Kombat or something. Um, <laughs> But that was fun, and, and I remember I was here in '91 when when Jimmy was making when make, was making his run, and uh, we only had grounds passes, but I, I got in the stadium every day somehow. Um, and uh, then playing here, I think I played professional in '99 doubles for the first time. So um, there have been a lot of memories memories here. Well, it's meant a lot, you know. It's it's. <laughs> The highest of highs, and it's probably been the lowest of lows, also. Um, but uh, it's certainly never been boring. You know, I, I've uh, I've always enjoyed the energy, and um, you know, I, I feel like uh, each Grand Slam is almost a microcosm of of the of the place it's played in. And this is uh, this is a show. You know, it's New York City in every way, and um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I've been a, a very very small part of it. You mentioned that run. Jimmy Connors, his photos up on the wall. Are you ready to let it all hang out now that you know it's your final tournament? Do you think you can go on a, a dream run here? Uh, well, see, I wish it was a choice. Some are still learning. I didn't want to tell the guys that had to had to play, so James is going to be surprised. Um, Dougie was a little baby about it all. <laughs> Lost a lot of man respect for him. Um, um, everybody, I don't, I don't, everyone is a little stunned at, at just because of the, the finality of it all, but I don't think anybody was really surprised. Um, I, I think the people that know me know um, that, I, that I've been thinking about it for a little bit. Um, you know, and uh, I just, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's the time. And uh, I think they all understood that, and uh, they're all happy. And, you know, some of my friends are excited because it means more golf rounds, you know. So I, I see some head nodding there. So um, not a, everyone's been, been very supportive. I think so. Um, you know, uh, I, I can't. I can't protect them now. You know, that's for sure. But um, you know, I think. Uh, I think John's ready. You know, and I think. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be. You know, Marty's really good with the younger guys, and I think. Um, you know, it'd be that time. Ryan. Ryan. Uh, Ryan will play well, and he. he you know, kind of once he once he figures everything out and. You know, it doesn't change the fact that I, li I still live four miles away from him, so I'll still kick his ass. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, no, I feel I feel pretty good about it all. And you know, even though um, I won't be competing against them, I I think they all know that I'm I've never been more than a phone call away from them. Thanks, Bill. When you're uh, back at home in Austin and you're walking about the house and you see that beautiful U.S. Open trophy that you won, uh, what what goes through your mind? Um. Honestly, I don't see it very often. It's in a study, and we all know I probably don't go there very much. So <laughs> I see it probably as much as you guys see the one here. <laughs> George, to play another match at night, how much have you enjoyed night matches here at the Open, and how much different are they from Dana? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the most electric atmosphere in our sport. Um, there, there's something about it. Uh, there's a lot of eyeballs on TV sets from people who don't even normally watch tennis during during night matches at the U.S. Open. So um, I think I've played as many as anyone, and 
you know, I, again, it's just something I'll look back on with, uh, with really fond memories. Um, hopefully it won't be my last one. Sandy, last question. Do you think it's going to be an adjustment to be at home because you guys are rolling on and everything and you haven't really ever stayed at home since you and Amanda were on the I, You know, I, I don't think I'm foolish enough to think that it's all going to be easy for me. You know, I, I don't know that I would be that presumptuous, but um, I, I, I love my home life. You know, I, my friends, my wife, uh, my dog's going to be excited. I'm not going to be a deadbeat dad anymore, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it'll, it'll, it'll be an adjustment, but hopefully if, uh, if I ever want to come say hi to you all, they'll give me a credential. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.